Hey guys, how's it going? It is me, Josh Halter, owner and founder of The Bio Dude, down here in Houston, Texas. Hurricane Harvey was kind to the dude, but um, it has been a rough couple weeks. I thank everyone um, that, that has been supporting the donation that I have on the website, as well as sending their thoughts and prayers to me and uh, all of us down here in Houston. Today, I am going to be talking a much asked video uh, about chameleons and bioactive. And today, I'm specifically going to talk about veiled chameleons as I have a significant amount of experience with them. I had my female chameleon Stella live for eight and a half years. Her last three years of life, we had to give her oxytocin injections, um, you know, so she could pass her eggs once a year. But other than that, she could, she lived a full, healthy life. Um, in front of me, I have the 18 by 18 by 36, I believe it is, exo, um, Zoom Med screen cage um, called the Rep to Breeze. Um, I do like these cages, but there are other, other brands out there, and this is a small chameleon cage. This is the type of cage that I would recommend for, you know, a juvenile veiled chameleon or, you know, an adult female veiled chameleon would be fine, but if you have a male, you know, you're going to need something a little bit bigger than this. Uh, you don't ever want to keep your chameleons together either. They should be, always be kept individually. But for starters, um, I got my 16-inch Tinkman Herbs LED up top here for plant growth. I have, of course, the cage and all the goodies. And today I'm going to show you guys essentially how to create a bioactive tank for your chameleons to get all the benefits of bio in a screen cage without keeping up with a ton of mess. So the very first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my substrate and here I have my terra firma. Um, the, and what we're going to use with the firma is a deep, dense layer that we're going to dump directly into here. So I actually have some already mixed up here in this bin um, that actually is already seeded with my isopods. I am using larger isopods. I'm using powder blue and giant oranges mixed together. I'm just wetting this substrate a little bit. And essentially, I'm not using springtails, and the reason I'm not using springtails just yet is because with how I'm setting up this tank, you're going to see why. Um, as far as your maintenance goes, I will go into that as well, but I am not going to be using any cover down here at the screen. I am going to let the firma impact the screen directly. I'm going to talk about what you can expect long term with the cages, as well as alternatives. The first alternative would be to use a tub that fits the entire perimeter of the cage um, and you need something that's at least this tall because what I'm going to show you is being able to give them really what they need you need a deep dense layer of substrate especially for female old world chameleons such as the veiled chameleon um, so when we go in here and I got the pharma all saturated with the bugs and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and, and dump in the firma right at the bottom here. So we're going to get all the substrate in here. There we go. Just going to dump it to make it a little bit easier. And you can see it's messy. That's fine. You know, it's going to be messy initially when you start it up. Now, if you want to prevent the mess, one thing that you can do is, besides the tub that goes around the, around the perimeter, you can also use a plastic bag. And you can literally set the cage inside of a plastic bag like around the, the, the perimeter, and, and it'll catch all the excess moisture. Now, with how the firma works, it's going to dry out a little, it's going to dry out pretty quickly. But with how you have to have the chameleon set up, I'm going to explain when you have them set up properly, how the, the, the need for watering this tank every single day is not going to be necessary. More like watering once a week. So after we have our, our, our base layer in here that has our population of powder blue isopods and giant orange isopods, and if I was going to use something to cover the screen, I would use springtails. I am then going to take my, uh, my Bioshock, which is right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to dump the Bioshot in right up the top. Now what the Bioshot is, it is essentially uh, mycorrhizae, fungi, and archaea, bacteria. And essentially what they do is they create 
They help drive the processes and also uh, help break down organic matter and turn it into macronutrients for your plants. Essentially, it makes your green thumb a little bit bigger. And um, uh, as you guys a lot of know, I recently rotated out my kids. I did this because the learning curve is so much easier. You don't have to worry about keeping the bugs alive if you don't want to while still getting all the awesome benefits of bio. The next thing that we're going to do is I'm going to take the one of the biodegradables that comes with your kit, and that is the my AAA sphagnum moss. And you're going to go and you're going to cut cut it open. Now, what I love about these bags is you can just go ahead and just dump the water in. You don't have to worry about you know getting buckets upon buckets of stuff, um, which makes your cleanup a little easier. You take it. like that, your spag moss is, is, is the perfect moisture content. Wet but not dripping. Dump, I dump in the entire bag. I'm then going to distribute this evenly among the top. Right like this. So I'm building it very similar to my terra firma, excuse me, my terra flora and terra fauna, nixing the drainage layer because it's not needed, and putting it at the top. Now I'm not going to keep it, keep it like this the entire time and I will show you guys why soon. The next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm then gonna add the next layer of biodegradables, and that's the, the oak, okay? So I'm just gonna take the oak leaves, just gonna dump them in at the top. And I'm only gonna dump in half the bag, so right at the top. Now, in the wild, where do chameleons live? They live in the canopy, in the trees getting necessary UVB, getting, uh, uh, being able to thermoregulate with the sun, and being able to access shade. Veiled chameleons, when they get up in the morning, being in, in the, har the harsh area that they live, a lot of times they will eat foliage in the morning, um, such as leaves off of trees, to help rehydrate them for the day if it's not going to rain that day. Chameleons physiologically are one of those animals, they just, they just can't get dehydrated for a long time. That's what makes, that's, what, that's one thing that makes them so hard on um, to some people as captives. If they get dehydrated, they just go downhill so fast. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to directly plant the tree in here. Now I have a lot of people that are going to ask me, Josh, why can't I just leave the tree in the pot? You can't leave the tree in the pot because these trees need, they need to have a lot of space for the roots. So you have to let the roots spread out. That's why a lot of times in your chameleon enclosures, when you buy these nice, big, beautiful ficus trees that, that, that the dude sells, you know, they die in three months because their roots have nowhere to go. This not only gives you the ability to plant the entire tree in your tank, but it also allows you to plant larger, larger things, such as shrubs, hibiscus, other more larger, sturdier trees that you can find locally that will help you, um, you know, give your chameleon an actual legitimate tree to live in, and that is exactly how you should keep them. The next thing that I'm going to do, as you can see, I'm mixing them up. So I'm getting the soil nice and evenly mixed here. This is going to help um, with, with the bio shot included. This is going to help with um, the plant and the tree from getting shock. Um, which can happen with your trees because they're a little bit harder to transplant. The next thing that I'm going to plant is a bromeliad. Now, people are asking me why, I've had people ask me why you put chameleon, uh, bromeliads in your chameleon cages. What I like about bromeliads is their axles hold water. So it's, it, it's, it, it's really good when you notice that your chameleon's on the hunt moving around. Sometimes they go near the forest floor. If you think they see water um, in, in a plant in the axles, that just gives them another source of clean water. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the bromeliad, I'm going to plant it at the bottom. Now you can mount them epiphytically, uh, meaning above the soil. But to really get the benefits for your chameleon, I'd really recommend planting them down below. And I'm just going to plant it right like this. Okay. Now you can plant the bromeliad in here because of the firma of it draining as well as it does, um, as well uh, because it, this is an established mother plant that already has a has an uh, has a uh, baby attached to it. 
So you can you can see what I got going down here on the floor. As far as the amount of leaves and, and sphag moss that I have mixed in here, this is the exact concentration that you want. And the reason I say that is because you are you don't want a bunch of loose stuff as, as much because chameleons, as precise as they are with catching food, it's extremely important that you're that when keeping them in a bio setup, especially panther chameleons. That, that you keep them in, uh, you, that you put the insects in some sort of container or tubs. When they catch them, um, they're, they're not picking up chunks of spag or chunks of leaves. If they eat those things, are they gonna get hurt? No, um, in my opinion. If your chameleon is healthy and you're keeping it accurately, that is something that they should be easily able to pass. But if your husbandry is not on point, then yes, something like that could potentially cause problems if, they're, if they are immunocompromised in any way. So, so after I have my tree, and of course this is going to get a lot bigger as it progresses, I also have the moss vines um, that Exoterra makes. And I found, I found these to be excellent for the chameleons, um, as well as using ghost wood. Now I like to use ghost wood that is a little bit um, thinner that has a lot of grooves that their feet can clamp onto, especially, you know, baby chameleons. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna put this right here, like this. Excellent. And then I'm gonna take the Exoterra moss vine right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to mount it all throughout the top. Now this is going to give your chameleon plate more places to climb. It's, it is definitely recommended to give them lots of foliage, more plants, um, well more plants, uh, you know, really thick plants as far as how dense they are. Because that's something that's really important to make them feel, feel so secure. A clean water source that is available rather often, especially for your younger chameleons. Alright, let's see here. Oh yeah, I can I can kind of see that. I'm gonna take the other uh, jungle vine right now. I'm actually going to stick this down into the substrate and it's going to be worked like this. If I could get it to stay. Okay. So then, to keep this side up the way the place that I want it, I'm going to take my bromeliad mounting clips that I sell bend it and stick it right on through bingo for a little bit okay now this is a very rudimentary cage in my opinion for chameleon and I mean I wanted it to be a little bit more simpler but as this ficus tree grows it's going to cover up to here because it has the help from the LED. Now, chameleons, it has been noted that chameleons are pretty sensitive eyes and that LEDs could potentially, I don't want to say disturb them, but that hasn't been studied and nor has it been proven that I could find. I've been keeping chameleons in this type of setup now for years, years, and I've never had any issues with them being disrupted from the LEDs. That being said, uh, things to look for if your chameleon might be disrupted from it is never going to that part of the tank. Um, if for for example, they're always so if the LED is up here, they're always going to be here and up here. They're not ever going to venture back there. Uh, as far as the ficus tree and other things like that go, they can be they can be exposed to a little bit of heat. Uh, but it is, you know, recommended to make sure that your heat source is going to be somewhere where the plants aren't thick, uh, aren't really densely vegetated. Now, as far as feeding, I did mention the cup. Chameleons in general need an extremely varied diet. Dubia roaches are great. 
Wax worms are a great treat. Horn worms are an excellent treat. Uh, black soldier fly larvae are great. Crickets are okay. They're just dirty. A lot of people don't have anything else to feed um, except roaches or crickets, and that's why I always recommend the dude's bug grub. This is my formulated 100% organic uh, insect gut loader that turns into Play-Doh. You add one part of hot water, one part of bug grub, turns into a Play-Doh. You can mold it into whatever you want. Doesn't stick to your hands, creates a wet, uh, a water station as well as the food station and gut loads them and provides the carotenoids to actually break down and synthesize said of vitamins and minerals that are contained in this wonderful drug. So the next thing that I am going to incorporate is the heating and the UVB. Chameleons absolutely need to have it. No, there is no, there's no reason that, that, that you shouldn't have it if you're keeping chameleons. There are two different options and I'm going to be, you know, pretty honest about it. You only use the CFL bulbs if you have no other choice. I sell these because it, this is better than no UVB at all. Um, the T5 UVB lights that I sell, you know, they're, these are great in my opinion. Uh, not as much gets filtered out through the top screen. Um, and the T5s last a year instead of the six months that the uh, CFLs and T8s are. Um, but another really good UVB source are the Power Sun that has the heat and the UVB built in uh, from mercury vapor bulbs, I believe it, the mercury vapor. Um, if you wanted to go with the CFL, you can use like the mini combo deep dome with a ceramic heat emitter uh, and the uh, and the and the CFL bulb, or you can go with a single heater with the ceramic heat emitter. Veiled chameleons in general, uh, they they need a hot spot. Most chameleons, besides your montane ones, you know, will need some sort of hot spot. Um, and then the next thing that comes with the humidity, um, is, you know, with the humidity, with the lighting, is how do you keep your chameleon hydrated? Um, as far as you can mist the cage every single day by hand with one of these pump misters that you can get at Home Depot. Or, in my opinion, if you have a chameleon, you should have these, well, one of these. The very first one is the Zoomed Reptifogger. And I really, really like the fogger because it, it literally it creates the mist for them to instantly get benefit of. And it's very, very easy, easy to use. And if you can come over here, you can actually see my fogger work to my red eye tree frog tank. You can see it in the back. It's shooting out. And then you can see how it fills up the bottom of the tank. So that's something to really consider because it really, really helps your chameleons out stay hydrated. And I really, I, I really can't, can't emphasize enough how important it is that you keep them, keep them hydrated. The other one is a misting system. Um, in my opinion, you know, by far, by the, the best thing that you can use. Uh, misting systems are very easy to hook up. I will always use the double nozzles from Mist King and able to do that. And I'm actually going to show you guys how to install the bulkhead at the top and put it in right now. So I'm going to separate this out and separate out this. So I have an elbow right here, I have a bulkhead, and I have the mister. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the bulkhead, I'm going to take some scissors right now. I'm going to figure out where on top I want it, and then I'm just going to put a hole right through the top of my brand new cage. Now, you can do what I just did, or you can, you know, um, buy the screen wedges that Miss King makes. I like to do it this way. So, then you're going to take your bulkhead, and you're just going to run it through right here, and you're going to see a bunch of little pieces of metal right here. See that? That's sticking out. What you're going to do, you're going to make sure the screw, you screw it on, and then you just keep on screwing. And then eventually, after you get all the way up, the metal goes away. Any excess, you just rip off. Fingers around the side, it's clean, now safe for your animals. You then take your misting, noz your misting nozzles, put them in right there, like this. And how I do it is, since I have, you know, um, a tree in here, I have one nozzle going directly down and one nozzle going this way. You can also broaden them out like that, however you want to do it. 
and then you to connect it to your tubing you just put on your elbow that's it now you have automatic misting with a 100% natural environment that you can have the 100% on a timer giving your chameleon the absolute best care possible I always like to double check my husbandry I, I have a temp gun um, and I also have I also use these from the Vivarium Electronics uh, thermometers. They are marketed to be 0.01 accurate to a degree, that's what they say. Um, and I've never had any issues with them whatsoever. So I'm very happy with these. Um, many of the products that you see here on my website are always have free shipping. Miss King ship free, Reptifogger ship free, UVB and heating always ship free. And again, guys, I really hope you enjoyed this presentation about chameleons. Um, I didn't touch base about the about the, the veiled chameleon care as much. Um, if you want more information, feel free to, to post and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Please visit my website, thebiodude.com. Check me out on Facebook, Instagram. Please subscribe to me on YouTube, The Dude Abides.